Shalom, shalom. Hope everybody's having a blessed day. Man, I took some time and made a couple notes to just give you a testimony of the Dallas, Texas Straightway Truth Ministries, you know, fellowship, Sabbath day teaching. The title of this one was the meetup, a cult meeting. Okay. Man, I want to say first and foremost, I've had the opportunity to attend a lot of churches in Christianity, a lot of different denominations, non-denominations, you name it. Even attended churches in other countries in places that I've lived at for particular amounts of time. And I can hands down say that I have never in the physical, in the present, experienced anything like that. Let me add on. I've been to several convocations and different conferences and things like that. And man, they were selling tickets and mixtapes and shirts and all kinds of stuff, selling tickets to for you to have admission to get in there. You know, first and foremost, the most high y'all cleared a path, you know, to ensure that I was present because I truly needed to see that. If you don't know, man, you know, my family is, is blessed to be able to run a dog boarding and daycare business. And with it being summertime, you know, we are slammed packed. And this event was held on Saturday, this past Saturday. And in my area, we experience a lot of power outages. So, you know, on our website, we pretty much publish that we are commandment keepers and we are closed on Saturday. That does not take away the fact that, you know, still have to give the dogs food and water and be present in case there is a power outage because our kennels have AC in them. You know, I had a dog that was scheduled to get picked up yesterday on Sunday. And all praise to the Most High Yah because this lady out of the blue called and said, you know what, I'm going to be able to pick up my dog on Friday. Will that work? I said, heck yeah, that'll work. You know, so I was then able to call the number that you often see behind Shepherd Dow and a very, uh, you know, polite and Yah fearing sister answered the phone, made sure I had all the information, you know, and added my name to the list. And I was able to, you know, get up about the event started at 10 and I got up at six, prepared my coffee, you know, made sure I was strapped because, hey, anytime, anytime I roll, uh, you know, I know, I know Hasatan is at work. So just my normal routine. And I get there probably with about 20 minutes to spare prior to uh, the event kicking off. And that is my first, you know, fellowship on the Sabbath. And this just so happened to be in Dallas, Texas. I cannot say enough. Words do not do it justice that I've never seen or experienced anything like that. From the minute I walked in the hotel, you know, two sisters that were helping facilitate the event 
pretty much directed me where I needed to go. And when I tell you it was all brotherly love, I'm in the, I'm not a, by nature, I'm not a hugger because I don't, I don't hug a lot of people in the, in the world. You know, I may, I may lean in and give you a pat on the back, but this was open arms love. Open arms. Brothers pretty much saying, hey, no, 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 I don't know you, but you're here for this word to keep the commandments. Bring it in. Bring it in. I had to make some key notes. And like I said, words cannot won't or won't even do it justice because man it was just an all around great experience and i know some people have it in their mind that man this is cult like but i would challenge you to go back and look up the definition of a cult in the dictionary and then go back in the word and see where you find that the whole world is going to be saved. That the whole world will have salvation. That everybody in your bloodline, your family, your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, your granddaddy, your brothers and sisters will have salvation. Will have eternal life. You know, you get so used to these places when you're in Christianity that have these repeat after me phrases and abracadabra, you saved and got eternal life and you don't have to do anything. And man, I was, I was fortunate enough to be able to experience this because spiritually the truth is like a razor blade cutting that flesh. And the message, the basura, the gospel, as Shepherd was delivering it, is like lemon juice being squeezed on them open cuts. And I tell you, man, it was the one of the best experiences I've had in my life. One of the best experiences. And I'll tell you a couple things that without of a doubt, you know, I can concretely say that you can tell not only do the brethren love you, it's not just words, it's actions. Let brotherly love continue. But you can tell Shepherd loves you, Shepherd Dow loves you through his actions. He cares more about your salvation than your own blood family. Let me say that again. You have gotten very docile to the word love. And you've grown up with these people that tell you that they love you. You know, a child will learn idolatry through their parents. A child will see their father bring that Christmas tree up into the house. That child will see the mother, you know, get these ornaments and stuff to dress the tree and you learn this behavior from the people that say that they love you. And when you break down idolatry, you come out with idol tree, a tree that doesn't move. The behavior and way of life of the heathen, which the Most High Yah told you to stay away from. 
Shepherd Dow cares enough about your salvation. He cares so much about it that he tells you the truth, the only way, straight way. His labor of love is not only preaching the basur of the gospel, but being a living example, just like many pillars of the faith chapter of Hebrews 11. The men and women that was counted as righteous. I'll tell you, man, from having interactions with him, he made his rounds, made sure he talked to the kids, made sure he talked and gave encouragement to the to the to daughters of Zion, gave encouragement to the brothers. You can tell he loves his family and his kids. He loves all of his Ashias and his kids. You can genuinely tell that. Man, if you have family that's in ministry, in Christianity, maybe, maybe your father, maybe your uh, you know, your mother, your grandparents, maybe they are pillars in the Christian church, but I can tell you this. If they say you love, if they say that they love you, I can guarantee you that their love doesn't even come close to the love that Shepherd Dow has pertaining to ensure you have eternal life, ensuring you have salvation. What made this event so unique? Man, I don't care who you. Who you use as an example, you can use Benny Hinn, Creflo Dollar, Joyce Myers, Stephen Furtick, Michael Todd, Smart Christian, Marcus Rogers, you know, uh, what's the other guy's name? I can't think of his name. You can take all of them and I can guarantee you one thing. You're not going to see them keep the Sabbath holy. We've heard things like Geno Jennings say, I preach the Sabbath, but I don't teach people to keep it. So here you have. Shepherd Dow and the Straightway Truth Ministry team, Pastor Corey was there. And I tell you, Pastor Corey is all of, you know, don't hold me to this, but I would say six foot, maybe six one, not bulky, not stocky, but when he gave me a hug and reached out for open arms, you can tell a man that's labored, you can feel it, hardness. You're not going to see another team, another ministry travel around for the sake of making sure you obey the commandments. They're them teaching, you know, the gospels, the basura, the message. Separate Dow and, and, and the Straightway Truth Ministry team could have easily said, you know what? We don't need to come to Dallas. But, you know, they traveled in order to be able to make sure people had the truth, the unadulterated truth. And that's the only way that the truth should be given. All throughout that gospel, that preaching, you know, he covered a wide range of things. And there's something in it for everybody. He might have said something and it not pertained to you. Maybe you have already come out from that part. 
But I guarantee you, if you were there, he was not only telling you the truth, but giving you encouragement to fix the areas that you are deficient in, derelict in. And it was truly, you know, in love. It wasn't a hypocritical message where he's telling you to, to come out and, you know, he's got some mansion in the city. Wasn't a message where him telling you to uh, come out in the wilderness and he can't tell you how to do it. You see that on a consistent basis that he not only shows fruit, but that fruit is what separates straightway truth ministries and a lot of these other non-commandment keeping ministries, Christianity, Christendom. Luke chapter four, verse 16 through 18. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet of Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, but he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Shepherd Dow said something that was very profound. And I tell you, I'm still marinating on it. He said, You've heard Jesus preached many times, but you have never heard the message of Yahshua preached correctly prior to coming the straight way. You experienced a conviction here, whereas in all those other messages you heard from others, you felt none. I said, dang, that's 100% spot on. And it makes 100% sense. These other men in Christianity and some of these other, they can't even come just because you pick up the Bible and read it and start teaching and put all this extra antics on it does not mean you have the spirit of understanding. And these people will tell you that they have the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, but it never convicts them to obey. He said, you heard Jesus preached many times. And I'm like, I sure have. He said, but you've never heard the message of Yahshua preached correctly. Look at that passage that I gave you in Luke 4, 16 through 18. Shepherd Dow modeled that, okay? It's his custom to keep the Sabbath, to preach the gospel as he is anointed. And, and, and what makes this really, really concrete? Man, out of a four and a half hour experience, it only seemed like 15 minutes. I ain't never been that locked in in my life. Never been that locked in in my life. Nobody was yawning. Everybody was attentive, locked into the word. On the final part, before we broke bread, he preached deliverance. And I tell you, if you haven't, if you haven't, Watch this past Sabbath day teaching on Straightway Truth Ministry channel, Pastor Dow or Straightway Live. Man, you need to go back and watch it. It was like on the job training when he was preaching deliverance, walking you through it. I ain't never in my life, never. I didn't heard a whole bunch of people hooping, hollering, a ah, 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 whole bunch of, you be like, man, what the heck? 
you know, it'd be borderline witchcraft people want you doing. And they call that casting out. Whole bunch of entertainment. Shepard Dow broke that thing down. He said, man, if we wouldn't have had to switch rooms, we could have got busy. I said, man, whoo, he's got a fire in him. He preached deliverance like Barney style, purple suit and yellow toenails. Gave you hands-on instruction. This is what you do. You ain't got to overcomplicate it. That's why that passage is so important. Okay. John chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. At the very beginning, Shep got the grease hot. By saying, some of y'all I saw the last time in Dallas, Texas. Some of y'all I don't see. But for those of you that are still here, what are you doing? And he continued, even in personal conversation, he said, Little by little, don't do it all abruptly. Don't make no uh, abrupt decisions. Little by little, you should be doing something. That's stuck. Man, I've seen plenty of people travel around for the sake of money. You know, selling tickets at the door. I was telling Brother Michael Israel about an experience that I had with the United House of Prayer, where they sell tickets to go to their conference, and it ain't on the Sabbath. But he's delivering this truth in love for the sole purpose of you being set free. Sole purpose. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. He broke something down. He said, disease, disease, die easy, die easy. Because you choose the lifestyle of not coming out, you're going to die easy. Said, mm. All kind of, I can't even recall. And, and the time goes on and I marinate. Just remembering nuggets that was dropped and making sure that I write them down. You know, he didn't talk about anything new. It was the same message. But in so many words, is able to speak to the audience in a unique way for that daytime and hour. He said, what are you still doing here? So the next time I come, hopefully you have made some progress of coming out. Accountability, holding believers accountable. It's easy for everybody to say, man, Man, I want to change, man. I want better and all of this and the food is bad and this is that. And But you're not going to hear these other men hold you accountable. You're not even going to hear them teach the message come out. Because they're trying to keep you in. They're trying to keep you into uh, idolatrous worship, replacement theology. They definitely ain't teaching you to keep the commandments because that means either they're going to have to change the day which they hold their services or they're going to lose a lot of their congregation. So you definitely don't hear them teach, come out from among them and be ye separate. They spend time trying to tell you, hey, you can you can do that. Repeat after me. Abracadabra, you saved. You can be among them. You ain't got to separate yourself. 
Oh, everything is clean. Don't worry about that. See, I can't tell, man, I can't even stress to you enough how rare this was. First John chapter two, verse four, he that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. That right there is what sets a lot of preachers apart. The other guy that I meant to say, his name is uh, Vadi Vodi Bokum. Man, I've heard all of these guys teach on the Sabbath, but they always wind up telling you that you don't have to do it. They tell you that they're following Jesus. And I read to you in Luke that it was his custom, Messiah's custom, Yahushua HaMashiach. It was his custom to keep the Sabbath and to teach in the synagogues, to stand up and read, to preach. So what's their excuse? You've heard Jesus preached many times, but you haven't heard it preached correctly to the point where it convicted you. And that's the difference. Acts chapter two, verse 44 through 47, and all that believe were together and had all things in common. Man, I've seen, I've been to family reunions. Uh, I've been to well put together functions. But I've never seen anything so cohesive, righteous, and functional like that in my life. Never. And sold their possessions in good and parted them to all men as every man had a need. Man, Shepard Dowell always talks about how long he's been doing this and how it started out and how some of the people that he started with are long gone, whether they in the grave or they decided to walk away. I tell you, man, there's probably not one person in your family that says that they love you, that's willing to make a sacrifice on the level that you can be biblically free from this system, from the captives, from the people that want you chasing the American dream, want you in debt, want, you, want your families broken. Verse 46, and they continue, continuing daily with one accord to the temple and breaking of bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and the singleness of heart, praising Yah and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the ecclesia, to the church daily, such as should be saved. It was not only a great fellowship in righteousness. But, man, I've been to Sunday sun worship Christian churches. I've given uh, an exorbitant amount of money. And you didn't see no collection plate go around. You go in some of these churches, man, they had them collections plate. Them things be shined up with brass soap. Sometimes they pass it around two or three times. It was the environment that, man, if it's on your heart, you know what the word says. No need to be said. Furthermore, they were able to bring the whole, you know, security team in order to have enough security provide you with a great meal, four course meal. You got some people that don't even eat that good on their own. Salad, uh, pasta, turkey, uh, what else? Brisket, uh, uh, a nice garlic bread, and then dessert. 
didn't have to pay a dime. All you had to do was show up. Told you, man, I've been in these places of Sunday sun worship. And you can't even get a turkey, a, a cup of coffee in there without paying. You know, they didn't dang near got Starbucks in their places of worship. You got spiritually fed with the word. And then you got fed in the physical. Didn't cost you a dime. All clean food. Something that I realized was it wasn't a fashion show for the men and the women. Wasn't a I'm gonna outdo this brother. I saw more, I saw more work boots than anything. I saw more tactical pants. There wasn't nobody walking around talking about, let me see your fringes, brother. Let me see your fringes. No. He even taught on that. You know, there wasn't a fashion show amongst the women that were there. That is hands down. Man, this summer when I traveled to Arizona to spend some time with my daughter, I traveled through Houston and I probably saw in that airport one set apart woman that had the appearance of being set apart. Between my own blood family, my mama, my grandmama, my aunties, saved and sanctified, I've never seen that many Modest and meek, quieted spirit, set apart women in one setting. Never, never. And all the times that I didn't been a member in these Christian churches and all of that, never have I ever experienced anything like that. And uh, for the people that weren't all the way spiritually there and they're still, you know, uh, early work in progress. There wasn't no, uh, you know, you getting jumped on. There was no need because the message we got, he didn't have to add anything to it. It already cut. The flesh was already cut by the truth. Like I said, you know, had a great opportunity to you know, fellowship with a lot of uh, brothers there. You know, find out that some of these people are closer than you think. You had some people drive from six hours away. Uh, you know, some people three, some people in my own state of Oklahoma. You know, it wasn't anything but a, a, a two, about a two hour and 40 minute drive from where I live. And uh, I tell you on the back end, you know, I definitely got some things that I need to write on my board and focus on daily because when you look at the example that, uh, you know, Pastor Corey, um, Brother Gideon, uh, Ellis the Hebrew, uh, Brother McNabb, you know, just the testimonies that was was being shared in there. I said, man, boy, yeah, we, I'm telling you. I haven't had, you know, even from my own biological father, you know, you simply don't experience that level of love. In my case, not knowing my father, but in the case of others, where they have brought you up in Christendom, teaching you all the ways that are not biblical. You're not going to experience that level of uh that level of care and love towards your salvation. Enough that he tells you the truth and don't really care how you feel about it. Hoping that you will pivot and turn 
from the ways that's keeping you among them uh, instead of coming out. Like I said, this testimony, you know, doesn't even do with words the justice that it could because it was truly an event, you know, and with tabernacles coming up in the feast days, man, don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. Do not miss your opportunity. I cannot say that again. To all of the naysayers, to all of the naysayers, whether it be a uh, smart Christian, whether it be Geno Jennings, whether it be uh, Ringo TV, man, there was things that I asked Shepard Dowell and it was genuine questions and I got answers. I got answers. Wasn't hard to get answers. He made himself easily accessible. But for the brothers that have turned away and chosen the path of hatred, envy, you don't know what an opportunity you missed out on because here's a man with over 30 years experience and living set apart they could help tell you how not to make errors on this walk, what to watch out for, how to get your household together, how to be a, a, a better husband, a better wife, a better father. Missed out on an opportunity. Man, you'll realize one thing. Everybody's reading the book. A lot of people picking up the book, reading it, teaching it. But these people are not teaching it correctly. You know, they're teaching you to keep Jesus' birthday, but can't provide a scripture where you're told to do that. You know, they're teaching you this fairy tale uh, about. Christmas, and you can't find that nowhere in the book. And here he is coming straight up the middle, as Brother Michael Israel would say, telling you to simply just obey what's there. Simply obey what's there. And you realize why the persecution comes. Why the persecution comes. You know, I can't encourage you enough, Israel, to little by little come out and make efforts in order to put a separation between those that are workers of iniquity and Shepherd Dow and all of the pastors at Straightway Truth Many, all of the shepherds always keep you on the cutting edge of making sure you don't get comfortable and complacent. So you realize that there's always something that you can be doing. There's always higher levels of holiness. Man, Shepherd Dow. When he gets on that word, I'm talking about a hundred octane. But when he's not preaching, such a humble, humble man, humble man. And it's, it's truly a shame that the heathens will support lawless teachers you know, teachers that deceive them really don't care about your salvation, just want your money, living in mansions, buying planes and yachts and all of this. And these folks don't even want him to have a house. As many, as many, how many, and this is what I'm saying, how many, how many houses has T.D. Jakes put people in? How many houses uh, has Michael Todd 
built for people with his own hands, not contracted out. How many houses has Joyce Myers provided for people to come out? The list goes on. You just don't see it. There is no fruit in these other places. So not only does this ministry teach come out from among them, keep the commandments. Your love should be uh, parallel with your obedience towards the Most High Yah. Not only does he preach biblical coming out, but he's showing you with over 30 years of receipts that you can tap into. And guess what? Better yet, if you need a little help, they'll help you come out. And they got receipts. This is why I said this is a, this was a, an experience that I've never experienced before. I'll leave it at that. And that should tell you enough. And when you read about, you know, the way being hard and the gate narrow, if you don't understand what I'm saying or comprehend, chances are that you have been deceived by these pulpit pimps to thinking that the gate is wide and the way is easy. Chances are you haven't faced no persecution in your walk. And the chances is you haven't been walking in truth. Man, stay encouraged, Israel. Stay encouraged little by little. Work out your salvation. There's always something you can be doing. Even when you have those good days, those old spirits, remember where they first had their home. So there's always something you can work out. Man, I hope I said something uh, to encourage you, to motivate you, and said something to get your gears going, not only to uh, promote straightway truth ministries, but to promote the truth of the Most High Yah and the remnant that is living set apart. Man, Brother Marco Hamlin said 100, 100, 100. Jay is real, gave that strong arm. Elder Rob Mack said, bless you, my brother. Hey, appreciate all of y'all in the chat. Hey, hey, stay encouraged, Elder Rob Mack. I know the job that you're fulfilling right now is not easy, but hey, there's no better, no better person to be doing that other than you. And definitely glad to hear Pastor Mir's voice on that, uh, that other, uh, I want to say it was blog talk radio. It was good to know that he was in there motivated and encouraged as he faced that, that persecution. So I hope you guys have a blessed week. You know, we will be locked in uh, this Shabbat at 2 p.m. back to my normal schedule. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking about being a soldier. I think about OPSEC and uh, I usually don't disclose you know, my location until I'm post travel. So if you wonder why I didn't do a Sabbath day teaching or something like that, I'll always keep you guessing. I like to keep the enemy guessing. I don't like to give uh, the enemy an eight digit grid so they can pull up on me. So have a blessed week. Stay encouraged, Israel. Closer to y'all ministries, kicking that thing, gun barrel straight. Bow.